I close the theatre once, I will open it again. <laughs> yes. I'm Nick Bagnall, and I'm the director of Our Lady of Blundell Sands by Jonathan Harvey. I'm Jonathan Harvey, the writer of Our Lady of Blundell Sands. Should be the director as well, but... <laughs> <laughs> Our Lady of Blundell Sands is about two sisters. The two sisters have sort of locked themselves away from society for quite a number of years, so there's, uh, there's, there's lots of secrets going on in this family. The younger sister, Sylvie, who's about 60, she lives in a fantasy world, and um, her elder sister sort of fans the flames of that. So um, she, she was in Z Cars in the 70s, the TV show, and she still thinks she's a huge star because of that and that she's built up this false world around that. And with the family coming back, we sort of know they either have to buy into that or it all could shatter. And within that family, there are some rather delightful characters as well. So you have Mickey Joe, who is also known as Crystal Fist, who's a drag queen. His partner, Frankie the Fetus. Because he's a bit younger. He's a bit, because <laughs> he's younger. Um, and then the younger son, 20 years difference, is, um, the brother of Mickey Joe is a guy called Lee Lee, who apparently was um, the definitive Peter Pan at the Neptune Theatre. Um, and his girlfriend, Alyssa, who has also um, become part of the family. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's really moving. It's um, incredibly witty and sharp. Um, uh, it's all set in one room, which is really delightful because it's kind of chaotic and claustrophobic. Um, it's laugh out loud funny and also um, terribly tragic at times when the secrets and the lies all get unearthed um, in the family. So it's a real roller coaster of a play, actually. The rehearsals are going well. I mean, it's a funny one when you do a second production and half the cast are the old cast and half are new. I think it took all of us a few days to find our feet with it, really, because it's not just a remount. Out of the six actors, there's three new ones. They've brought a different energy into the room and that's all you kind of have to listen and respond to that really good really good fun and really good additions to the company as well because that's hard for an actor to step into somebody else's shoes but it hasn't kind of been the brief wasn't that the brief was coming and you know create we will get you new shoes <laughs> we'll get you new shoes and we have actually yes. um, so no it's been great it's delightful i always walk away from something and think oh i'd like to look at that again so I've had an opportunity to do that, been able to tweak the things that bothered me. You know, in any production you ever do, you always go, oh, you close your eyes at one bit because you think I haven't had time to look at that properly. But with this, there's been some nice um, bit of tightening stuff. It's so exciting to bring it back. Um, we've lived through a time when that, there's a distinct possibility that might never happen again. So to get, to get a chance to do it again is, is really thrilling. And it's lovely to be the first show back with a full Full, full blown audience instead of having to be seven miles away from each other. Yeah. This, this play is full of laughs, so I think that's going to be a real tonic actually. It's that communal experience that you, you don't just, you just don't get it when you're watching telly on your own or with a small group of people. I came to the Christmas cabaret at the Everyman and just to see artists singing and performing, I found it really moving actually and it was much more emotional than I would usually find someone's belting out a Christmas tune. So I think there'll be an element of that, of, uh, oh look, we're back. 